All right, so this is a screencast to accompany the basic grading criteria for all written work. So I will have this posted in our first announcement, and I will also have it posted under our content tab in the table of contents with this title, Basic Grading Criteria for All Written Work. Okay? So let's go over it. So here's a list of grading criteria points to consider before you submit work to be graded. Be sure to carefully read and review these as often as possible. In other words, don't just read them once. You might want to read them once or twice uh, or every time you do an assignment. Um, these points serve as criteria to award and reduce your score for the written work of the, in this class. So number one, your written work must accord with the points in the reading and how we talked about the ideas in our Zoom meetings. Your points must answer the questions, not just reword the question. When you miss Zoomings, you also miss key points that are invaluable to answering specific questions, okay? So in other words, students might think that you could do this class without zooming, and what that does is it jeopardizes your the points you could receive for uh, an assignment. Not only are you forfeiting participation points, but also uh, key points in which you could uh, help uh, your score in terms of understanding the ideas. Okay. Two, ask for help and ask if you do not understand. Yet specify your confusion as closely as possible so it is tough to help with the plea it is tough to help with the plea i'm confused um, also do not wait till you get downgraded to indicate that you're confused uh, always be proactive and ask for specific help before you submit any written work our zoomings are the perfect place to ask and likewise, do not hesitate to email me via D2L, okay? So in other words, be proactive with your confusion. If you're confused, really, as we're covering it in our Zoom meetings, ask, uh, ask before you write things down, etc. okay? Don't hesitate to do that, because that's the best way to help, but you need to have a very specific uh, way in which you indicate what your problem is, okay? Three, all late work will receive a 20% penalty. That is to indicate that the grade will be reduced below 80% if any of the above criteria is problematic or any of the criteria listed here. Always four, always carefully read view and utilize the provided and specified readings, uh, PDFs, online links, uh, videos, etc. Before you write, and most importantly, before you Google and or look something up elsewhere. This is important because sometimes we'll be dealing with issues and I notice and I could tell with uh, students in their writing that they'll Google it and then come up with some answer that actually is kind of close, but it actually is not close to the reading. And then likewise, it isn't close to how we talked about it in our Zoom meeting. So before you Google and look it up somewhere else, always look at our reading for the answer. Because again, as I've specified elsewhere, this is a reading centric course. Okay, philosophy is reading centric. So I can't emphasize that anymore, okay? This is a mistake students make. Five, usually we are studying a particular philosopher along with his or her philosophy. The philosopher's name must be mentioned in your writing, okay? Your score will have points reduced if the philosopher's name is not mentioned. The philosopher's name must also be correctly spelled. These are common mistakes, okay? Sometimes we'll have readings whereby a philosopher's name is not specified, and I know what those are, 
So I won't downgrade you if I know that there's not a philosopher's name specified, okay, as to who wrote it or who are we covering, okay? And that will be clear. This is the only case where no name, no name needs to be referenced in your writing, okay? Six, usually we are dealing with a particular philosophical theory, concept, or idea. The particular theory, concept, and or idea must be mentioned in your writing. If the theory, concept, idea is not included, your score will be reduced. The philosophical theory, concept, idea must be also correctly spelled. Seven, always write to the word count. Usually the problem with the written work is that it's too short. Uh, when a student's work falls below the word count, the student does not have enough room to answer the question. In other words, there's not enough of an answer. It's fine to exceed the word count, provided that you are sufficiently answering the question as clearly as possible and not getting sidelined into distraction, risking a score reduction. Eight, any or all examples offered in your writing and in conversation must be kept to a bare minimum and not override the answer itself. If you do offer an example, it must accord to the subject matter. In other words, do not offer non-ethical examples for an ethical point. Okay. Uh, nine. You will get zero points if plagiarism is detected via your Turnitin similarity or otherwise. In other words, there's a software that's enabled when we turn in our written work that's referred to as Turnitin. And if that similarity is uh, reporting that uh, this writing is from somewhere else, I will give you zero, okay? And not only that, uh, I could sometimes myself uh, detect the uh, writing is not your own as well, okay? Uh, so in other words, if that turn in similarity is not turned on, I still have ways of telling whether or not the writing is yours or not, okay? Uh, sometimes your turn it in similarity percentage will increase if you cut and paste the assignment question into your work. This is not a problem and it is easy to detect if this is the case. In other words, you might get a high percentage on your Turnitin, and you'll you'll it'll be clear when you turn it in. However, if you know that, say, you cut and pasted my questions, the assignment questions, into your uh, writing, that will uh, give you a high Turnitin similarity. Uh, but I know that this is the case because I have a way to see it whereby it just indicates that this is work that was cut and pasted from the, um, the prompt, the rubric, etc. Okay? 10. It is all right in conversation to use the verb phrases Socrates says, Socrates talks about, Socrates speaks. However, in your writing, or Socrates spoke of, etc., past tense, right? However, in your writing, avoid such phrases and replace the verbs with better choices. Here's a link to Bloom's Taxonomy of Verbs. Whenever you're inclined to write the verbs says, talk, spoke, etc., refer to Bloom's and find a better verb to replace it. So let's click on that. Okay, so if I'm wanting to... Uh, write the word says, I could write uh, Socrates clarifies, Socrates avoids, Socrates evaluates, Socrates distinguishes, Socrates judges, uh, Socrates exposes, Socrates uh, summarizes, Socrates uh, supports, Socrates elaborates, Socrates explains, uh, etc. Okay, so this is fairly easy to use. Uh, don't get too distracted making it any more complex than it is just when you're inclined to use the word or the verbs says, talk, spoke. Just refer to this Bloom's taxonomy and change it. Okay, 
because I will be on you for that. 11. Your answers, replies, and all written work must clearly account for each and every part of the question. No part of the question is to be left out. 12. Do not rely on mere implication. Do not simply imply, hint, or suggest the answer. Write as explicitly as possible. This is one of the most common mistakes students make with their writing and with their philosophical thinking in general. In other words, another way to put this is students will think, oh, well, the professor knows what I'm uh, writing about, but don't assume that I know what you're writing about unless what you're writing about is, ex is as explicit to the points that I'm asking you about as possible. Okay, that's key. 13. Always reread your written work out loud to yourself or to someone who will listen uh, before you submit it. This is the best way to find typos, grammar issues, misspellings, etc. Once you read the work out loud, it becomes immediately apparent if there are technical issues with the writing. So even if you notice, I've been reading this out loud and I just found a few things as I was going along, okay? So do that. This is a common problem people have. Usually they're just writing along in a big rush and not really paying attention to how clear the writing is until it's too late. Okay, so you don't want to find out once you've submitted it, oh, I could have I could have just read that to myself and cleared up some of those grammar problems or those spelling problems. Okay. 14. Uh, there could be additional criteria points not included here that apply to a specific assignment. If this is the case, you'll know of these ahead of time. So I'll often have assignments where I'll let you know if there's additional criteria points on top of these to keep a, a note of, okay? Uh, 15, do not quote anything from the readings. I already know what these people write, okay? In other words, we have the reading in front of us. What's important is how you understand them, not how well you could quote, okay? Because oftentimes students quote things thinking, well, that he or she says that or writes that better than I do. Point is, I know that. In other words, I know what is written by the philosopher. However, your writing here is what's most important, okay? That's the most important thing. That's what I'm grading you on, okay? Unless otherwise specified and or instructed. In other words, sometimes I might ask you to quote things uh, and we'll take it from there, okay? Then, uh, here is a percentage breakdown of how the criteria points apply to a 100% maximum score. Oops. 100% to 90%. Uh, this is excellent work. Your philosophical points are clearly understandable within the context of the specific assignment and as we covered it. Two, basically I understand most if not all of your homework assignment as it's written. Most of your points are explicitly accounted for. Nothing is missing or very few things are missing. In other words, you could still receive less than 100 if things are missing, if they're minor things, okay? Uh, or if there are points that I feel deserve the points reduction, namely these points or specific points about the understanding of the philosophy, things like that, okay? Three, sharp grammar and minor spelling issues. In other words, grammar and spelling can confuse your points if you're not careful, okay? Uh, uh, 90 to 80% grade, uh, this is good work, um, but there are missing connections and or negations. Uh, two, you got the assignment in large part, yet a few of the philosophical points and terminology are not quite lining up. Uh, three, you could be getting half of it right, and the other parts are opaque, bizarre, problematic, contradictory, quasi-rational, etc. Here is where there might be grammatical and spelling issues that obscure your points. Uh, good basic effort, yet I cannot understand the connections, etc. Parts of the assignment are missing or not lining up. The written work has grammatical and spelling issues that obscure your points. And then anything below that, I usually don't give you these grades unless there's problems with it being submitted or plagiarism. Okay, so thank you. And of course, ask me questions. Bye-bye.